guys. I've got this shiny painting in progress right now. It's not yet complete, but I am going to be showing you in this video how I go about certain phases of it with the gesso and the gold leaf and how I do that and my tools and materials. And I hope you enjoy. I'm going to be using some of this Daniel Smith titanium white watercolor ground to build up some texture and some minor relief on a painting. So first of all, watercolor ground. If you've not come across this stuff, it is basically like a gesso for watercolors. It lets you paint on any surface with it. And it's kind of this thick, creamy consistency. Let me show you a little bit on my brush. It's rather thick and gloppy. There we go. So that's what this stuff is. And you can paint it on basically anything you want. I've used it to paint on glass, on metal, on wood. And after I do that, then I can proceed to paint on that surface using watercolors because it's a little bit more absorbent than gesso would be, for example, with uh, acrylics and oils. So I have here in this little jar, this little jar here, um, it's just a small amount of the watercolor ground. And I keep it in here because this is a rather large container. And for the most part, I don't necessarily need that much of it at any given time. And constantly opening and closing this jar means that it dries out quicker. So I put a small portion into a little smaller container. That way, whenever I need only a, a little dab of it here and there, I can open this up and it's all good. And my larger, more expensive container doesn't dry out immediately or dry out within a couple of months, which is what happened when I, I found when I was constantly opening and closing it. So I have this painting here. It is a phoenix. And I wanted to add some relief texture to it because I have in mind, you see these little circles here. I'm going to be making those slightly raised and then I'm going to be applying gold leaf to that. And I'll show you that phase as well later. So first of all, I take this watercolor ground and I like it to be you know, very thick. So sometimes the drier stuff that's further up on the edges of the jar are nice and crusty and <laughs> slightly dried out. And that actually works better for this scenario where I'm using it in order to, uh, to have that texture. When I want a nice smooth surface with it, when I'm just, you know, painting it onto wood, then I'm going to not want it to be as gloppy. A little bit too much actually. <laughs> and the reason why I'm painting this first onto here before applying the gold leaf is I actually want the gold leaf to be slightly raised and that gives it gives it dimension. And when you have that dimension, because it's reflective it's going to be that much more interesting a surface because it will catch light and really glow and gleam. So that's kind of the fun aspect of it. And actually, this is this is not something that I came up with my own, but it's, it's kind of a traditional um, way of applying gold leaf using gesso. And the reason I'm not using gesso, straight out gesso itself, is because I don't paint in acrylics or oils, so I don't actually have any handy on me, but this watercolor ground serves the same purpose. It's multi-purpose for me because I use it in all other areas when I'm painting as well. So if you're not painting in watercolors and you happen to have gesso around, you can do this just as easily with that, as long as you don't plan to be painting over it with any watercolors. So you can see I'm leaving it quite thick and gloppy. And when I'm done doing this phase, it's going to take quite a while to dry. 
Sometimes it might take a couple hours, other times even longer than that. But if there is sunlight outside, that's actually the optimal way to get it to dry quickly. Uh, when I put a piece that has this ground on it, even at really thick applications like this, it dries usually within half an hour if I put it in direct sunlight. So that's kind of a nice thing. However, right now it is almost 6 p.m. So I'm not going to have that luck. Fortunately, I'm going to be running off to a pottery class after this <laughs> to play around. And so I'm going to let it dry while I go and do something else. And then later when I get back, I can do the next phase, which will be the watercolor ground. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the gold leaf. And I can show you how that works too. So there we go. We've got some nicely raised little bits all over here. And I'm going to just let that dry and come back to this in a couple hours. All right, things have now had a chance to dry. So I'm gonna proceed with the next phase of this, which is where I'm going to be putting some gold leaf on. So the tools I'm gonna to need for that. I have the gold leaf. I have a vial of this stuff, which is gold leaf sizing. It is basically, uh, it's, it's a little bit like rubber cement where it's, it's tacky when it dries. And it is a glue, especially used for gold leaf, to adhere it to surfaces. And in order to apply that, I'm going to be actually using a crow quill pen as well as a very, very abused brush. <laughs> Don't ever use any good brushes with this stuff because it will destroy your brushes. Uh, you won't ever be able to use them for painting again. <laughs> this brush, I hesitate to even call it that any longer. It's basically turned into a rubber tip tool, <laughs> which makes it perfect for this. So I use it in this situation all the time now. You can also buy special silicone silicone uh, tipped tools used for sculpting at craft stores they're called color shapers i believe and it actually is very similar to this so-called brush now uh all right so to start i'm going to take this stuff and i'm going to put some notes at the end of the video as well for the specifics of what all of these materials are called including the watercolor ground. And I'm going to use the brush for this. And just paint it over all the little gesso areas that I did during the first phase which was actually last night. This has all had a good chance to dry at this point. Now there's various types of gold leaf sizing. This one, this maniatum that I use is a very specialized one and it is a little bit more expensive. I've only been able to ever find it available for sale online, not at any of my local stores. At a very, on, on some very particular sites, but it's, it's interesting. It's, it's different from some of the other sizings because it's very fluid and that means that it can be used with a crow quill pen, which is not the case for most gold leaf sizing. Most gold leaf sizing is going to be very thick and gloppy and you would not be able to get it to work with a crow quill. This on the other hand is fairly thin as far as sizing goes 
And so that allows it to flow through a pen when I choose to use it for those situations. In this case right now, I, uh, I could use some of the other kinds of sizing as well, but the other thing, the other benefit with this maniatum is that it just works better. It really lets the gold leaf adhere to it quite well. Some of the cheaper sizing that I've used, there will be portions of it that dry out really quickly, and then when you go to try to put the gold leaf on, it does not stick to those dried out areas. But this stuff, generally, you're supposed to wait about 20 minutes from after you apply it until it has dried to this tacky state. It's very sticky. And when it's in that state, then you can stick the gold leaf on top of it. I'm going to show you a little bit with the pen as well. So what I do to clean this, I basically just wipe it off and I'll, I'll run it underwater as well, but really it doesn't come off the brush. <laughs> as I said, it's turned into a rubberized tool at this point. All right. So with the Crowquill pen, now this, this looks fancy, but it's just purely aesthetics really. All it is is a you know 99 cent crow quill tip. You can buy these at any any art stores, okay? So this is just a fancy holder that I have because it makes me happy. And artists need things to make us happy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you don't really need to spend much on this. And the nice thing about using a pen to apply this stuff is it doesn't actually ruin it. You can wipe it off, wipe off any residue when you're finished, and it's as good as new. So, in order to use this, I just dip it in there. And then I can actually draw with the maniatum. And this allows me to get some really nice fine lines if that is what I am attempting to do. You may have seen the, the little bee paintings that I create now and then with the very delicate gold squiggly lines around the borders and this is how I do it. I apply it using a crow quill pen Alright, so there are just a few of those feathers. I'm going to show you one other portion of the painting where I'm going to be adding the gold leaf, which will be in this circle over here. And I'm not going to do it with the pen, but I'm going to show you just how to clean it off. I just use a paper towel. Don't use tissue paper because that's too delicate and it'll just tear up and stick to the, to the, the sizing as well. So I just want to get it get between the tip, the spread tip. And make sure you get everything off and then your pen is good to use again. No residue left on it. Now I'm going to go back to my brush then and very carefully paint in this circle. And it's going to take a while. I'm just going to spread it around. But I've got to, I've also got to be very careful when I come up against the edges. Because 
because I don't want to have the gold leaf sticking to the areas, the unintentional areas, the areas that I've painted. So this is, this is how I get it into the larger areas. And I'm going to finish off doing the rest of this circle as well. But for now, I'm going to also let all this gold leaf uh, sizing dry for about 20 minutes. So I'm going to leave the painting and come back to it in a little bit. Things look like they're ready now for the next phase. So you can tell that the sizing is dry enough when it has that kind of duller look to it. It's not quite that shiny wet appearance that it had when I first applied it. And when it's at this point, that means that there's some tackiness to it that will allow the gold leaf to stick. So I have this 24 karat gold leaf, which comes a few different ways, but the way I prefer is where the leaves are attached to a thin tissue paper sheet. This allows for easier handling of it and letting you place it more easily. When it's just loose by itself, it's very delicate. Even in this stage, it's very delicate. If I were to touch it, it would come right off of the sheet. Another thing you want to do when using gold leaf is to make sure all your doors and windows are shut so you don't have a stray breeze coming through and blowing your gold all over the place. Don't sneeze as well. <laughs> so I take the sheet, turn it face down, and press it onto those areas where I have painted the sizing. I've also found another reason for using the sheets like this is that I end up wasting less of it because when the gold is just in loose format, it, it tends to be very difficult to handle, first of all, without breaking any of it, but also so much of it um, you know, if you touch it, it just kind of falls apart because it's fragile. And so I end up losing a lot of it. So all I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking these spot locations where I have painted the sizing all over the piece and pressing with my finger onto the sheet and that just transfers the leaf right off of it. Now a situation where you would want to use the unattached sheets would be if you were to be uh, gold leafing a, a large surface where you would want multiple sheets just sort of placed all across your piece. You might want to go for something that was unattached then because that might be simpler in that situation. It tends to be marginally cheaper to buy the leaf unattached, but it's it's such a, a marginal amount that it really shouldn't be, that shouldn't be the consideration when you're deciding which kind is the right, is the right one for your purpose. All right, now we come to this larger area here. And it's, it's the same thing. I just put it down and press. Now I've used up this whole sheet, so I need to get a second one. Just a little bit more coverage that this requires. Now I'm pressing pretty hard to make sure it really transfers well and sticks. 
All right, so now I have stuff all over. What do I do at this point? Well, I take another one of my cheapy brushes, cheap brushes, just in case any of the sizing is still wet enough. You don't want to get any of it onto a good, a good bristle brush. Brush. But for the most part, your brush isn't going to take a whole lot of abuse from this. It's mostly just the scrubbing action, so I wouldn't want to use anything with a nice tip. But then I go back through and brush off all the excess. Now remember before I was explaining to you that the gesso was, was not necessarily a required step but that I did it for other reasons. I did it for the aesthetics of having dimensionality. And you can see that now when the gold is actually on it because, because there's dimensionality and it's reflective, you're gonna get a lot more interesting interplay of light as you move from something that has volume rather than something that is just flat which has its places place as well in this. So you could see these other areas where I did not paint the, the uh, watercolor ground ahead of time. These are much more flat and it's just, it's just really on the surface. There's a little bit of dimensionality to it just because the sizing itself is is thick enough that you're going to have some noticeable uh, ridge to it. But especially since I'm using this, this maniatum stuff, it's a relatively low profile. You can see now, even as I'm talking, <laughs> some of the leaf is blowing away, which is why I said don't have any open windows. I made that mistake once and I had almost three sheets blowing off across to the opposite corner of my office. <laughs> In this larger area, it's the same thing. Sometimes if you if you missed an area when you were pressing the, the leaf from the sheets on it, you can sort of take the excess here and brush it over into those areas and it will stick. Now this is another reason why I, I really like using the maniatum sizing versus some of the cheaper, more prevalent options out there because it is much more forgiving in the, the window of time that it allows for you to, uh, between application and when you're putting on the leaf because some of these other sizings, you really have only a window of about 15 minutes and if you wait too long, then it dries too much and nothing will stick. And if you don't wait long enough, then you have this wet, gloppy, shiny mess. But this stuff, I mean, I left it actually for about 40 minutes before coming back to it just now. And so there was there was a pretty wide range from what the recommended amount of time is for it to sit. And it still takes the gold leaf very nicely. All right, so there we go. Lovely and shiny. So I hope you liked watching this video and I hope you come back and check out other ones in the future as well. Thanks.